Hello, and welcome to the Thyroid Warrior Podcast. I'm Ebony, and I'm here as your wellness facilitator. I'm going to be sharing my experiences in managing Hashimoto's disease, and I really hope that it'll help you on your personal journey. Keep in mind, however, this does not substitute as medical advice. It is only for your information and motivational purposes only. Now, let's get started. Hello, friends. I am very excited about this set of podcast episodes. And the reason why we have to have these types of conversations is that it enables us to really and truly work on why healthcare is the way it is and why it is so important for us to make conscious decisions to be advocates for ourselves. And I am starting off with having the conversation to discuss health disparities, to discuss policies, not so much because sometimes it's a lot of words to get to a really simple outcome, but we have to have these conversations because health disparities impact a lot of different people. And far too often we look at health disparities and we automatically think race. And that's not the only thing that is important in that discussion. So I wanna set the stage on understanding health disparities. And as I mentioned before, in many, many podcast episodes about, I'm going to talk to you about the policies in in healthcare as a system. And this is where we're starting. So what is a health disparity and, and why does that matter? And simply put, health disparities can happen when a particular group lacks access to adequate support and overall well-being due to an unequal dissemination of resources. Now, I want to have very candid conversations about this because it has really and truly divided us far too much when we're talking about this. And and we really need to have that heart-to-heart, you and I, together. And when we talk about the lack of resources, it can impact an individual based upon their race or ethnicity, their gender, sexual orientation, their disability status, their socioeconomic status, and even where they live. And based upon this definition, that is why I said it's a lot more than just what we think of, and that is race or ethnicity. And in addition to looking at these factors that I outlined before, we also have to think about what else can have an impact on that. And that's lack of quality care. And that goes for not just our general health care, but it's also behavioral based care or our mental health care. It's poverty. And then there's also unequal access to quality education. So when we look at different communities that can be impacted by this. Of course, we can look at what we are used to seeing. But what I also want to do is lay a foundation of how can we respectfully have this conversation with each other? Because as I said before, right now, talking about care and Just everything in our world has just become so politicized and really and truly racial focused, but we have so much more to look at. And yes, from a racial and ethnic perspective, a lot of this is at a systemic level, but we have to recognize that we have so much more in common than we think. And how do we band together to address many of the things that you're probably hearing in mainstream media? Now, a lot of people are probably tired of talking about this. And if that is you, that is totally okay. You can go ahead and pause or stop this episode and that's fine. 
but I've always had the stance of talking about healthcare and being an advocate for yourself. And a part of that also has a lot to do with you understanding how these things can impact you from an individual in terms of accessing healthcare. And that experience is going to be very different for us, but I want you to think about yourself as an individual and what issues have you faced when you go to the doctor. And I guarantee you, regardless of who you talk to, they will have a shared experience with that. So what we're going to do is we are going to start this conversation by talking about what's called social determinants of health. And What's really important with this is there are five pillars, basically. So when, I would say a couple years ago, but there is a, an initiative called Healthy People of 2020, and that topic was meant to create goals to promote good health for everyone. And we're understanding now that Again, we have a lot more to work on to get to this point. But as I said before, we all deserve to have equal access to care. We all deserve to live a happy, healthy, and joy-filled life. But there are things that are going to impact how each of us gets that life that we all want. And when we think about social determinants of health, it's looking at your environment, meaning where were you born? Where do you go to church? Where do you work? And even what school do you or your children go to? And these things from an environment and perspective can have an overall impact on your health. And The five pillars that I want to outline are economic stability, education, social and community context, health and health care, and finally, neighborhood and built environment. And you can go to healthypeople.gov to look at these objectives in more detail. So when it comes to economic stability, and this is something that I see a lot working in healthcare and working on the development and coding basically of the electronic medical record that I work with at the moment. And we're looking at what's called the social determinants of health or, or looking at it as a wheel. And all of these things that I just mentioned, economic stability, education, social and community context, health and health care and neighborhood and built environment, all of those things contribute to that will populating, so to speak. And individuals at the office, meaning those on the care team, are going to ask you different questions that help them to understand where you fall in this so that different resources can be made available to you. And this is something that I have told my mother about many, many times. And it is how she is able to get transportation back and forth to the doctor and all of her appointments. And it's also how we were able to get her medications at low or no cost. So it's not that healthcare providers are really and truly trying to quote unquote, get in your business. But we're noticing how all of these things can have an impact on your health and that is why it is starting to be more and more discussed so if your doctor is asking you have you felt more depressed lately or do you have people that can help you as it relates to getting to your appointments or are you having issues with food and some of those things can really and truly seem really invasive but It depends on your doctor and it also depends on what your relationship is with them, whether or not, which will determine whether or not you're comfortable sharing these things. But I'm giving you the background and the context as to why they're asking these things. So for this particular episode, I am going to break down what topics are within the pillars And then what we're going to do is start talking about 
examples of some of these things and how they can show up. And the reason why I also set the stage in past episodes is because I wanted you to understand why it's important in terms of health literacy and why you might need an interpreter. And these are some of the reasons why, because I don't want a healthcare professional to take what you're saying out of context. And because you may or may not have a difference in communication styles or even languages, I don't want that to be a barrier for you or your loved one. So that is why I'm setting the stage for these things. That is why I have told you to have a filing system in place and why we're diving into this. So very quickly, and then we're going to end today's episode. But when we think about economic stability, we're thinking about, do you have a job? Do you have issues with getting food and good quality food? And a lot of times food deserts will come into play when it comes to this. What what is your housing like? Are you having trouble paying your rent or your mortgage? Or are you generally living in poverty? Those are things related to economic stability. Next is education. And it's related to early childhood education. It is, are you getting involved or enrolled in higher education? Are you or people in your community graduating from high school? And What is the literacy level of the people within your community? When you think about social and community context, are you participating in your duties as a citizen of your community? Is there a lot of discrimination happening where you are? Is there a lot of a high level of incarceration in your community? Are you all tight knit? Are you close? Do you watch out for each other? When it comes to health and health care, we've talked about this a lot. Do you have access to health care? Do you have access to primary care? Or do you know someone in your community that uses the emergency room as their primary care, for example, because they don't have health insurance? And even health literacy, which we've talked about. Do you understand what is being communicated with you or to you when you are interacting with a health care professional? That is very important. And finally, what about access to foods? We, we know about food deserts. We know about issues with not everyone being able to afford shopping organic, which is why in a former podcast episode, I also talked about how do you shop on a budget? And when we think about shopping on a budget, it's not just I'm capable or able to buy quote unquote, more expensive things, my budget is going to look very different in whatever stage of life that I'm in or whatever I have access to. Do you have a lot of crime in your community or is violence very prevalent or what's the environmental conditions like? Are you in an area that floods a lot? Because that's going to have an impact on your health, your infrastructure, your housing and all those things. And what's the quality of your housing like? Again, are you safe? Is it built up to standards? Is it built up to code? Do you have the city, for example, coming to do a lot of evaluations of where you live? All of those things are incredibly important as it relates to how we interact with healthcare. So I wanted to give you that overall, here is what healthcare is in terms of approaching it from health disparities and social determinants of health. And in the next episode, we're going to take a deeper dive into examples of how these things can have an impact on how we interact with the healthcare system. And just, again, I want you to go to healthypeople.gov, and that's for here in the U.S., to look at what is consider the objectives of social determinants of health. And then we're going to start looking more and more at how we can show up in healthcare to advocate for ourselves and to advocate for each other. So with that, be happy, be whole, and be well. Take care. 
Okay, thyroid warriors, get out there and take things one step at a time. Remember, reflect on your triumphs, know that you are doing your best, and do what you need to do in order to be well. I would absolutely love it if you subscribe to this podcast and share this episode with a friend. And don't forget, leave me a review. I read those and try very hard to improve the show based upon your feedback. So I'd love to hear from you. And with that, be happy, be whole, and be well. Take care.